Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today we're going to be talking about 10 excellent movies that you have probably never even heard of. So, longtime subscribers are used to me recommending movies they've likely never heard of, but it's usually specific to a platform like Netflix, HBO Max, Prime Video, or Hulu. But this week I'm doing something a little different because there are a lot of movies that are not necessarily available on a particular streaming platform right now that I would love to talk about. So this week I'm talking about 10 excellent movies you've likely never heard of, regardless of where they're currently available. However, if I find any of these currently available on any streaming services here in the US, I will be including that in the top pinned comment down below, along with all the titles included in this video. So when the video is over, you can scroll down there, do a screen grab with your phone and highlight the ones you wanna watch, and there you go, you've got a full list of movies to go to. But likely, you're gonna to have to rent a couple of these, but they're all great, they're all well worth watching. We're gonna start this list off all the way at the back with my number 10 pick, 1114. This movie actually features a really bizarre car accident that takes place at 1114, and what you get with this movie is several different stories leading up to that 1114 mark, and it's all wild stuff. Not only that, this has got a really great cast. You've got Colin Hanks, Ben Foster, Patrick Swayze, Rachel Lee Cook, Hilary Swank, and a bunch of others. And the stories along the way are really great. This actually plays out a little bit more like an anthology movie where you're seeing a different story each time, yet the thing that glues them all together is this 11.14 p.m. incident, this car accident that has a lot more going on with it. It's far-fetched stuff, but because you spend so much time with each individual character and each individual story, it makes it feel a little more palatable. It makes it feel like something, like a crazy event that could actually happen, but you do get some really great performances. The only weak part of 11.14 for me was that because it was structured in such an unusual way, you get some really great performances from people like Patrick Swayze, but you don't get to spend much time with them. They kind of come and go out of the movie pretty quickly. That is a nitpick though. This is a really cool flick that's got some gnarly sequences in it, including a severed penis. So this is not a good pick for the family, but most of the ones on this list are not. Now, another one that takes place all in one night is Sleepless Night. Now, this is actually from France, so it is French language, even though I I think there are a couple of characters that speak English every now and then, but this actually got turned into a remake with Jamie Foxx called Sleepless, which is a decent action movie, but the original from France is much better for a bunch of reasons. The key one being this sort of John Wick type feel. This takes place in this massive, sprawling nightclub. In the Jamie Foxx remake, it took place in Las Vegas, but here, you're in one building the entire time, and it's very much a cat and mouse chase. You get some diehard elements, but also some just balls to the wall, John Wick style shootouts and action sequences in this nightclub. It's gritty stuff. I feel like the Jamie Foxx version, while it was decent, they rounded a lot of the hard edges off of it, I guess to make it more palatable for American audiences, but the original is just raw and gritty and it's kind of bone crushing at times. It's a really great action flick. This one's from 2011, so well before John Wick, and it's going to surprise you how much it has in common with those movies. Now my next pick does not take place all in one night, but it does take place mostly in all one location. That's because it's a prison movie called The Escapist. Now this is an excellent prison flick from the UK that I've never heard anyone talk about. The director would go on to do Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Captive State, but I still think this is his best movie, and it surprises me that he's not doing more work because this one is so good. And it was well reviewed by critics. Brian Cox leads off a really fantastic cast in this movie, and it is a prison escape movie. Now we've seen that before, and The Escapist doesn't really do anything new, inventive, or different, but it's just really well crafted. I love prison movies, and this is just a great one that doesn't forget to have fun, meaning it focuses a lot less on the brutal nature of surviving in prison, even though that is a theme, and it focuses a lot more on sort of an elaborate escape plan. While this is not a comedy, it does have a little more levity to it than you would normally get in a prison movie, making it much easier to watch. Again, just surprises me that this one does not have a bigger audience by now. 
One of the more interesting and unique ones on this particular list comes from Spain. It's called Intacto, or at least that's how I'm pronouncing it in this video. But this movie takes place in a world where people can exchange luck sort of in a supernatural way, meaning like one lucky person can take someone else's luck with a special touch. That's sort of the setup, but what you get with this movie is a group of quote-unquote lucky people who are now competing against each other in this series of games, and they're really intense, like sprinting through the woods blindfolded. Doesn't sound that intense, but just think about what would happen if you tried to do that. It's wild stuff and makes for some really great scenes that are just visually stunning to look at and unlike anything else you've seen. And it's just a good quality thriller. Again, I'm not sure why this one doesn't have a bigger audience. I have seen it appear on Netflix and some other streaming services. Right now it appears that Plex TV is your best option for watching Intacto. You could spend a few bucks or you could just wait and see if it eventually appears on a streaming service you have access to, if you're lucky. Okay, technically there's a few more foreign films on this list, but they're from Australia and the UK, so they are English speaking. However, my next pick is the last one that is mixed language. It has French and English mixed in, in Brotherhood of the Wolf. Now this is an epic mystery tale, kind of done in the vein of Hound of the Baskervilles, yet it's in a very different time period. It's got some martial arts stuff mixed in. So it is this big fantasy movie that's just very interesting. I will say though, if you choose to watch this one dubbed, the dubbing in this movie is quite awful. I really recommend watching it with the subtitles. Again, there is some English spoken, but this is a great sort of twist on Hound of the Baskervilles. I think some of the acting is so-so in it, but then you also get a really great character from Vincent Cassell. Monica Bellucci is in it some, but when she's on screen, she is just all kinds of wonderful. I will say though, they do build up to a sex scene with her and it is going to let you down. But this has some great action sequences in it. It's visually stunning. Some of the visual effects are a little bit dated because this is a slightly older movie, but if it sounds the least bit interesting to you, it's a really cool flick that did get a little bit of buzz here in the US, but is still largely forgotten about. Now before getting onto my top five, as I said, all the movies in this list are featured in the top pinned comment down below, along with wherever they're currently available for streaming in the US. However, you may still be able to access most, if not all, of these movies using the right kind of VPN service, and today's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN, is the right kind of VPN service. Now, like all VPNs, they keep your web browsing safe, secure, and private. It is a good idea to invest in a VPN service nowadays, because not only are hackers trying to get after your information, but the government's looking at them, and God knows who else, but CyberGhost is safe, secure, and private, and they keep no logs of any of your data, so it is truly secure, but in addition to that, what makes it really worth the $2.19 it costs a month is it will allow you to switch what country you're watching Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu in with the toggle of a button, which is why any VPN won't work. You need one like CyberGhost in order to do this, but it is gonna open up your world to vast new libraries of content, and not just foreign content either. I'm talking big budget American movies and shows that are too expensive to get the licensing for. Here, they have the license in other countries, so again, you can access them with the flick of a switch. CyberGhost is super easy to use and they give you 45 days to try it out and offer you a full refund if you're not happy with it. So there's virtually no risk. They've got great 24 seven customer support in case you need help getting it set up. It is easy to set up, but you are gonna be able to set it up on up to seven devices at the same time. So if you need help with any of those, they're gonna be there to help you. Right now my viewers can pay as low as $2.19 a month. That's less than half the cost of one new release movie rental to unlock more movies and shows than you could ever possibly hope to watch. Again, link in the description. $2.19 for this, folks. It's a great deal. But with that, let's go ahead and move on to my top five on this top ten. Freddy Mays, I know something you don't. As I said, I've got a few more from the UK and Australia. My next pick is a gangster movie from the UK, very similar to a lot of Guy Ritchie movies. It's called Gangster Number One. 
Now this starts Malcolm McDowell and Paul Bettany in one of his earliest roles that really made his career because he does such a good job in this movie. What's interesting about Gangster Number One though and what sets it apart from all gangster movies is the gangsters in this movie are complete psychopaths. Now there are gangster movies that have characters like that but most of the ones in this movie are absolute nut jobs and not in a funny way. They're actually psychotic and crazy, bloodthirsty people and this movie has an incredible style to it. This director would go on to do Lucky Number Slevin, which also has a really cool, funky style to it. And you get that with Gangster Number One as well. And honestly, it feels a little more authentic here as well. It's not on a lower budget. It's a little bit grittier and it doesn't feel quite as glossy as Lucky Number Slevin did. If you are a fan of gangster movies, this is a must watch for you. If you love Guy Ritchie gangster movies, this is gonna be a must watch for you. There's a very good chance you haven't seen it, and I personally have not seen it available on a streaming service in quite a while, which is why you've probably never heard me talk about it, but if you've never seen it, it's well worth hunting down. Now, my Australian viewers, this is not gonna be a hidden gem for you. This is a classic in Australia, but I bet most of you will appreciate me shedding a little bit of light on Wake in Fright. Now, this movie is from 1971, and its director, about 10 years later, would go on to do First Blood with Sylvester Stallone. But Wake in Fright is an Australian masterpiece, and it's kinda hard to classify it. It technically, I think, is a thriller, although you might be disappointed if you go into it with those expectations. This is about a school teacher who gets trapped in this town where these these men are just guzzling beer all the time, and it's really a wild environment. This one is certainly the most slowest paced one on the list, but it is incredibly interesting watching this man really get sucked down into this hole in this town full of men who drink beer, wrestle, and shoot kangaroos. This movie is famous for featuring the deaths of quite a few kangaroos because they actually include footage of what they call the cull, where they go through and kill a bunch of kangaroos because they don't have any natural predators and they can kind of overrun parts of Australia. So it is not done with special effects effects. When you see kangaroos being shot in this movie, it is real. And for a lot of people that can be really upsetting, but it does serve a purpose in this story. And it ultimately ends up being kind of a horror story for this main character, yet you would not classify this as a horror movie. Although I have seen it available on Shudder in recent months. I actually saw this in the theaters. I know I'm not old enough for that, but I saw it in the theaters about 10 years ago because Martin Scorsese produced a reissuing of it, and I was really just sort of blown away by this movie. So if you typically like my older, more classic recommendations, you like Martin Scorsese movies, I think you're really gonna dig Wake and Fright. My next pick is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Jim Jarmusch movie. Jim Jarmusch is famous for directing movies like Only Lovers Left Alive, Dead Man, with Johnny Depp. He also did Broken Flowers and Patterson, but what I think is his best and most underrated movie is Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai. What? Ghost Dog. Ghost Dog? He said Ghost Dog. Yeah, he calls himself Ghost Dog. Now this too is a gangster movie, technically. Forrest Whitaker plays an enforcer that works for the mob, and he is a samurai, or at least he has trained himself to be one. That's really all you need to know. I also think that this is maybe Jim Jarmusch's most accessible movie. It is kind of bizarre and quirky, which he is known for, yet this one feels the most grounded and like it takes place within our world. It's also just incredibly entertaining. It's not silly or wild or crazy or anything like that. Forrest Whitaker plays this pretty straight, but it's got some really clever moments in it and some really interesting ones, and the story's really good, and it doesn't get muddied up with this sort of indie, filmmaking type thing that Jim Jarmusch does where he, I feel like he kind of gets in his own way sometimes and he can kind of work against the story. But Ghost Dog is an excellent example of his storytelling abilities kind of at their best. In fact, this is one of those movies, I think I own everything on this list except for Ghost Dog and I'm gonna have to remedy that after producing this video. Few moments later. They want $30 for the DVD of Ghost Dog, DVD, not the Blu-ray, because it's not of print and there's not many of them left. If I find any of these movies cheaper, available on DVD, available on Amazon, I'll put a link to that in the top pin comment for you as well.
Now, long before I was recommending movies here on YouTube, I was recommending them in person, but I could only reach a couple of people at a time. But one of the movies that I would recommend the most often, because I knew that most people I talked to would really enjoy this movie, is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Now, you may be familiar with it by now, but this is the movie that reintroduced Robert Downey Jr. to the world. If you didn't know, he disappeared for a while because of some things. And this wasn't the first one to bring him back, but this was the first one where he was back with that quintessential Robert Downey Jr. wit. It's almost too much in this movie because it's every five seconds, and that's because this was written by Shane Black, who is most famous for having written the Lethal Weapon series. Now, he actually directed this as well, and this is one of the first times he was in the director's chair. He would go on to do The Nice Guys, just another great buddy movie. But Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, I think, is even better because you've got Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer teaming up to solve a mystery. This was maybe the first time I saw Michelle Monaghan in a movie. She was just a total babe in it and really charming and fun to watch on screen, just like everybody else. Again, I think largely because of the Shane Black script. And it's just a solid, fun movie. It does a lot of things you've seen before, but then it adds little twists, just making every single scene interesting. And for me, it's highly rewatchable because it's so quotable and fun and fresh to watch. If you've never seen it, this is absolutely a top tier Darren Van Dam pick. And then we're gonna wrap this up with another gangster movie, one that really changes a lot of things, that's very different from any other gangster movie on the market. I know I had a few on this list. I actually kind of picked these randomly until I felt like I had a good list. And gangster movies are one of, if not my favorite genre. And one of my favorite hidden gems in that genre to recommend is Sexy Beast. Now this is from director John Glazer, who did some amazing commercials, some of the best commercials ever put to film. Here's to you, I have. And the fat drummer hit the beat with all his heart. He also did a lot of great music videos, including some of Radiohead's best music videos they ever did. And Sexy Beast is his first feature film. He would go on to do a really great one with Nicole Kidman called Birth, and an even better one with Scarlett Johansson called Under the Skin. But I think Sexy Beast is still his best movie. In this movie, Ray Winston plays a retired gangster who has just moved out to the countryside and is just soaking up some sun when his boss comes back into the picture, played by Ben Kingsley in a really intense fashion. He was actually nominated for an Academy Award for this role, and you can see why. Is your middle name ungrateful or what? Ain't you got nothing to say? Just gonna stand there like Porky Pig, hiding behind your wife's skirt, your ex-porn star's wife's skirt. He spends a lot of time yelling, but it's a really incredible and unusual performance for him. He is fantastic. And the movie itself, it's just got this really slick style to it. It's a very simple, streamlined story, and it works really well the way it's told in this movie. And you get some amazing sequences in it as well. This movie has some really great secrets that it kind of holds close to the chest and then reveals them later on. It's great stuff, but also, again, just clean and crisp and sharp. This movie has almost no fat on it, and it's just an excellent gangster movie that gangster movie fans will love, but that doesn't feel anything like other gangster movies. If I haven't sold that one to you by now, I don't know what to do, but that is the list. Let me know, as well as everyone else watching, if there's any other great hidden gems we should be looking out for in those comments down below. Also, help me thank the Patreon supporters. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter and seeing your name here at the end of every video on the channel, you can go to the link in the video description. There's also a link down there where you can become a channel member and get access to exclusive videos right here on YouTube. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this episode, and you will see me on the next one.